up, what's up, what's up? Welcome to episode 12. We back, you know. I ain't do a video in a long time, so I thank God for this, you know, platform. I thank God for everything he's up for this year. You know, uh, we do this, uh, you know, I do this on um, the glory for my Lord, Savior Jesus Christ, to give him glory in my life. You know, I've been shy, I've been insecure most of my life, man. I got to step out, you know. I got to do something different, you know. I got to, um, you know, glorify God with what he has given me, you know. So I thank God for this platform. I thank God for, uh, for the people that encourage me to, um, you know, people that listen to this stuff and the people that encourage me, like, just how you gotta get back to it. You know, I'm like, yeah, you're right. And I also want to give honor to my Lord, Savior Jesus Christ, like I said before. I also give honor to my leaders, Bishop Laverne McKinney, um, Pastor Ford, um, Pastor Stephanie, um, Pastor Cole, Pastor Sandra. They were my leaders in, um, in, in the, um, for the church. And I also give honor to my church, my home church, the Love Center in Sumter, you know, and um, the new church on Prayer Mountain Ministries at 521 Horseshoe Circle. Look for any churches in those areas, Sumter or Columbia. Well, those two churches, the Love Center and the Paramount Ministry. Amen. And also, I say I ain't perfect. I never will be perfect. I'm just trying to progress and try to do what God called me to do, and trying to, you know, try to uh, be a better version of myself. That's all I'm trying to do. So I say you pray for me, you know, as I pray for you. Amen. My goal is to do an episode every week or every other week. You know, I get back on this, you know, GT more. I get, I gotta get back. You know what I'm saying? But um, like I say, pray for me. You know. I got school and I got work now, so yeah, you know how that stuff go. But I also want to say three things I'm grateful for that God has done for me this year. Number one is that um I graduated from Winthrop University in May, May 2021. That was big for me. Some days, some days and nights, I didn't know I was gonna graduate, but I graduated. I thank God for that. Two, I got hired. Um, I had a job in a while, and I think I got hired. Three, um, I got sent to school. You know, I was leaving out to be in the school, and I got accepted. So I, God is doing great things in my life. I know God's doing great things in your life, you know. Um, to tell God and um, to um, tell show our, um, tell our testimonies, you know. So to bless other people, and so other people get encouraged, you know. God's in the blessing most. I thank God for that, you know. Living in answered prayers, and also share to people. Anybody needs encouragement to these videos, share it to them and say, get that Josiah GT videos. You know what I'm saying? You know, anybody needs encouragement it's for them, you know. It's for them. But let's pray first for the episode, Father. Um. We pray that this episode bless anybody that hears it. Um, I pray no one gets to prosper. I think for we are the light of the world. I think for great great things in store for all of us. I think for all things ready to go for our good. And um, I think for the best to come for each one of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, how I got an idea of, um, for first, the title is episode 12, Nothing Too Small or Too Big for God. I'm going to say it again. Nothing Too Small or Too Big for God. How I got the idea uh, I was reading Michael Todd's book, Crazier Faith, his newest book. I was reading it, and he's, he brought up a point where he says, what seems small for other people is the right size for God. What seems small to other people is the right size for God. Some things you tell people, and they don't even care. I don't care about that stuff because they, um, they don't have this, um, the love that God has, that, the love that God has. You know, God has a special love that he said, I care about everything you care about. If something hurt you, Josiah, if something hurt you, he said, I care about that. He said, I want that to be moved out of your life so you can do what God, do what I call you to do. You know, um, whatever, God takes pleasure when you are happy, when you feel with joy. The Bible said the joy of the Lord is our strength. God takes pleasure when you are happy. So we got to stay positive in that mindset, like great things are on the rise. And if things not right the way I want to be now, it's not going to be like that always. For God said, I will go before you and make the crooked places straight. Amen. So what seems small to other people is right size for God. But I would say we are God's, we are, we are God's apple of his eye. Apple of his eye. He cares, he, like, you are God's favorite. He loves you so much. He said, I want to do great things for you each and every day. You know, I love you so much. You know, you are God's favorite. Amen. What you could pray about, like, a good parking spot. And when you go into a job, Lord, I pray for this good parking spot. God cares about that. He help you get a good parking spot. Or you pray that your, um, your hair go bad. You had a, you had a condition. You had to go through this, um, transition where you lost your hair. God pray my hair go back. He said, all right, God, God said, I'll, I'll fulfill that prayer. I said, I'll pray your hair go back, you know. Or you you need enough money to pay the bills. You know, God said, I'll help you with pay the bills. You know, I'll, I'll give you an outlet of somebody that can help you pay the bills. You know, God care about every little thing you care about. The first verse we're going to hit is Proverbs 3, 5, 6. It says, trust in Lord with all thy heart and lead not to thy own understanding. And in all the ways, acknowledge him and he should direct thy path. The Bible says, trust in Lord with all thy heart. You know, I know this takes a progress. Prog progress you can't trust a lot of heart just right at the moment but it's a pro it's a process but over time we can learn to trust not the trust not our own understanding but trust in the lord amen i think the, the main reason we don't trust the lord so much is because we reason a lot 
if we think too deep into things, we're gonna start reasoning. Why is this like this? How? Why does this? Why does it don't be like this? You know, da da da. We reason every little thing, and that brings doubt. Reasoning brings doubt. Don't reason. The Bible said, "Walk by faith and not by sight." For we are the light of the world. We are children of God. I am who God says I am. I'm not who what people say I am. I know people say I made fun of me of this and that. I am who God says I am. Your past is not equivalent or what it could be your future. Amen. So every detail matters to God. I want to say that. I want, to, I want you to know that. Every detail about your life matters to God. Everything, everything, everything. So the, in the verse says, it said, in all things, emphasize the word all. All means everything. You know, everything. In all ways, acknowledge him. If you, you need um, help for school, acknowledge him. You need help for the work, acknowledge him. You need help with your spouse, acknowledge him. You need help with your diet. What, what, what food should I eat this, this season? Acknowledge him. What clothes shall I wear? Acknowledge him. Like, talk about your haircut. Talk about your your hair. Talk about anything you want to talk about. Like a best friend. The Bible said the Holy Spirit is a comforter. He said, I will comfort you in hard times. He said, I'm here for you in the bad times, also in the good times. He said, I will never leave you. He said, I am the helper. We have helper, which is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is your best friend. The Holy Spirit lives inside of you. Where is he that's, live you, that, that's in you? The heat is in the world. The Holy Spirit lives in your spirit. You know, not just your body. Your body, the heart. Um, the lungs, they in my body, but the Holy Spirit, I'm in your spirit, your your spirit, man. The deepest part of you, I'm in there. You know what I'm saying? I live inside of you. So the Holy Spirit is our comforter, amen? And we can ask the Holy Spirit, like, a really deep question about our lives, and he'll give us answers. Like like I said, nothing too small or too big for God. We ask the Holy Spirit about anything, you know? The Bible said Jesus counts the very hairs on your, the very hairs on your head. He cares about everything about you. He said, I'm going to count the number of hairs on your head. He loves you so much, you know. The Bible said you are fearfully one of made. You're not, just because people don't value like they value other people, don't devalue yourself because people don't value like they value other people. Know who you are in God. And the Bible said that you are the righteousness of God. The Bible said that you are heir of God, joint heir with Christ Jesus. You don't have to work for that. It's already given. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to work for anything for God. Grace is already sent to you just like it's sent to me. Nobody's, nobody's better than nobody else because we all want in Christ Jesus. Amen. An example, like if someone's hurting or something like that, like a child, like um, the child of a child's hurting, the parents like, oh my gosh, my child's hurting. Da, 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 da. I gotta do something to help them stop hurting. Or example, like a best friend, like your best friend's hurting, like oh my gosh, you feel sorry for your best friend because your best friend at the same time, same way God feels about us. If we hurting, God said, I gotta, I gotta do something for my my child to um help them to be to be better, you know, or to feel better. I like the promise that God gave us. He said he give you beautiful ashes. A lot of bad things, you know, happen in our lives, you know. I could say some things I wish I, you know, you could redo. But God said he'll give beautiful ashes. Now, I thank God for that promise. And I confess beautiful over ashes over my life and over your life. In Jesus' name, man. And also, when we pray for things, doesn't mean, just as it doesn't happen at the right, at the right, at the right time, doesn't mean it doesn't happen yet you know what i'm saying it's like just because you don't see nothing happening doesn't mean nothing move under the surface some things are moving under the surface and it takes time for it to, to manifest over time you know sometimes we like time being an illusion really everything we said or everything we pray for is already done right now in christ jesus everything you said i heard you the bible said god said i heard you the first time you prayed you know how to pray it again i said i already, I already did it you know what i'm saying a lot of time when i was doing these videos um i asked okay you subscribe to my youtube channel and it said done like that quick. It said, they didn't even question it. They didn't even like, say like, oh, uh, wait like another second. It said, done. You know? And that's just the way God answers your prayers and our prayers. He said, he said, done. It's already done. You you want this? Done. You want this done for your life? Done. You want this move out of your life? Done. You know, according to the will of God. According to the word of God, man. God is, God is no problem um, answering our prayers, man. And also, the second part is, ask big. It says in Matthew 21, 22, Jesus answered and said to him, I said to you, if you have faith and doubt not, and shall not, and doubt not, you shall not only do to this, done to the fish, but also to the mouth of be thou removed and be thou cast to the sea, and it shall be done. In all things, whatsoever you ask for in prayer and believe, you shall receive. You say if you have faith and doubt not, you should move to say to this mountain, be removed, and it shall be moved. All things, whatsoever you ask in prayer, believe it, you shall receive. Amen. Receive that. So if you're going through a difficult time like depression, don't say, Lord, help me handle this depression. But no, pray bigger than that. Lord, I think for beauty from my ashes. I think for changing my life so much that I forget whatever happened to me. The Bible said he wants to restore us to wholeness. You know, we don't have to be, walk 
um, limping all the time. The Bible said, I want you to walk up straight. I want you to walk wholeness, you know, be whole in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen? If you believe in God for um to pay the bills, don't just pray like I just enough to pay the bills. The Bible said, um, pray for a financial break, pray for more than enough, you know. Uh, God wants to bless our socks off. The Bible said, I believe God wants to God says try me. Like try me. God says to believe me and you to try me. See that I won't open the windows of heaven for you. The Bible said the windows of heavens are open for you. Amen. Amen. So we gotta try God. We gotta put our faith in God. You know, sometimes, sometimes, only myself, I pray these little prayers, like, Lord, do this for me, do this for me. I hope I ain't asked for too much, God. Like, man, just like, you don't ask for too much, man. Ask for anything you want. You know what I'm saying? It's yours, you know? According to the Word of God. If it's if it's in the Word of God, it's yours. You don't have to beg me. You don't have to um ask me multiple times. It's like, man, done. Just like the YouTube scribe. Done. It's already done. You want it? Done. You know? Especially for healing. Especially for um for finances. For anything you need. The Bible said, uh, all things are... um. All things to take care of for the, for the believers, okay? Amen. Uh, I like this concept, um, you know, with Kenneth Hager. Um, I like this. I read this book. It's a really good concept, he's saying. And it's Kenneth Hager. He's a, he's a man of God. He passed. But um, in his book, um, uh, in one of his book, A Seen and Growing Faith, he's talking about his vision he had with, with Jesus. Now, this is the real deal now. This is the real deal. Um... It's talking about write your own ticket with God. And he had a vision with Jesus. And Jesus gave him four instructions on how to get anything from him or God. Four instructions on how to get anything from him or God. This is the real deal. Like he had a vision with Jesus. Like Jesus, the, the Lord said Jesus Christ. Amen. So these are divine instructions. Amen. So the first thing he says to say it. Simple instructions. Nothing to confuse you. Say what you want. Say it. You have a part to play. It's like what Jesus said to the disciples. He said go out to the deep. What the disciples do, they had to obey the instructions of what Jesus um commanded them to do. Sometimes we want miracles, you're not corrupt. Sometimes we're not cooperate with God. We always speaking negative. We always saying this ain't happening. Always, always like this. It's you being negative. Like the one with issue blood, she said, If I may touch the hem of his garden, I shall be healed. What happened? What, what was the main reason she got healed? She said it first. She said, If I might touch it, which is a belief. You gotta got you gotta have faith, you man. You gotta have faith. Um, so I'm gonna read this um thing real quick. Um Amen. And Jesus said, if if anybody if anybody anywhere would take these four sets and put these four principles into operation, he will always receive whatever he wants from me or from God the Father. This is Jesus himself saying this in the vision. Okay? Alright, the second step is for the first step was say it, which is real simple. Say what you want. Say what you want. Just real simple. Um the second step is um to do it. Is to do it. Well, first I want to say, also said, also said before the say it step, it said that Jesus said, positive or negative, it is up to the individual. This is what Jesus said. Positive or negative is up to the individual. According to what the individual says, that shall he receives. That's what Jesus said to the individual, to him. The second step is do it. Jesus said, your action defeats you or puts you over, or puts you over. According to your action, you receive, you are kept, you, according to your action, you receive, or you're kept from receiving, you know, our action. So the second step is do it. You believe in God for, um, for anything in your life, you got to take that first step, you know. I believe God for this, so I'm taking the first step, you know, walking by faith and not by sight, you know. We can't be walked by fear, we can't stay where you are. Like I said, the, um, the disciples and the when Jesus said to the disciples, go out to the deep, they had to move. You got to move. You got to follow the instructions the Father gives you. Amen? Father gives you instructions, you got to move. The Bible said, I like the story with Noah. The Bible said, um, Noah moved with fear. You know, he's moved. His fear for God was so stronger than fear for man. He said, forget man. You know, I'm going to build this ark, you know? And sometimes, in each of our lives, we all build an art in our own way. You know, it may not be, you know, like a physical art, but like something that's out of the ordinary, that doesn't make sense to people, but God told you to do it. You know what I'm saying? That's an art. You know what I'm saying? And God said, build the art. No one move with fear. We gotta have our fear for God has to be strong, stronger than our fear of man. Yeah, man. Okay. And like the one with the issue of blood, she she moved. She said, she said, forget the crowd. I'm about to push my way towards Jesus. Yeah, Amen. 
And what the woman's actually showed, it showed her faith. Like I said, it takes faith to, to um, receive anything for God. Don't get confused. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. It takes faith. You got to believe. So the woman actually showed faith. She said, I'm, I'm pushing away to the crowd to, to see this man. Even though I got an issue of blood, I'm bleeding. I'm pushing away to the crowd because I have faith that when I touch his heart, when I touch his garment, I will be healed. Amen? Amen? Even sometimes faith with um, the sow a seed. Um, God told you to sow a seed. That takes faith. I know when I sow this seed, everything in my life will turn will turn better for all. Everything in my life will turn out what I want it to be. Sometimes it takes sacrifice to receive the blessing God has for you. It takes a sacrifice. It takes a pull. You know, it takes a, it takes a, um, God, you sure you want me to do this? It takes that, you know, to, to do what God called or to receive the blessing God has for you. All right, the third one is to receive it. The Bible says in verse 29, it says, She felt in her body that she was healed that plague. Receive what God has called, um, receive what um you asked God to do. Receive it now. The Bible said, um, what did the Bible say? Just sorry. <laughs> um, to receive everything, you know, the Bible said, um, um, like I said, from Matthew 21, 22, all things are, and all things, whatsoever you're asking, praying, believing, you shall receive. And all things, what you ask, you shall ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive. So we got to ask in prayer, believing, and we shall receive it. So receive everything you ask in God or you believe in God for right now. Receive it right now. Amen. I receive healing right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I receive financial breakthrough right now, right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I receive um supernatural intelligence right now in the name of Jesus Christ. But there's no time limit or time in, in, in the supernatural, in the spiritual, for everything's right now, you know. Um, it, like I said, it takes time to manifest physically, but it's already done now, amen, in Jesus' name. So as soon as she touched it, she became whole. And she said, um, thy daughter, thy faith, what made her whole? Thy faith had made thee whole. It was her faith that caused the power to flow out of her, flow out to her. So it's, it's faith that caused the power to flow out to us. We got to taste faith. Um, I like this saying. It said, power is always present everywhere. There's always going to be power. Jesus is everywhere. God is everywhere. I mean, God is omnipresent. You know, God is everywhere at, at the same time. God is here right now. God is with you. Uh, when we watch this video, God is everywhere. You know, power is always present. There's never an absence of power. You know, the Bible said two or three gather in my name, I shall be in the midst. There's never an absence of power. We just got to plug in, you know, just like an outlet. You got to plug in. You say, oh, my phone only charged, but you don't plug in the charger. It's not going to get charged, you know. Same thing else. What, what, what plugs in for God? Faith. You got to have faith, you know. Receive it now. Receive it right now. I like this example on um, Kenneth Pagan said. He says that um, he talked about a sickness he had, and he said he got healed one day. And he, said, and he asked do you think God sent that healing power from heaven just that day that he got healed? No. That power always been there. The power was in that room every day of those six months he was bed fed. What happened? Why didn't it happen sooner? Why didn't it happen? He said, because I hadn't turned the switch of faith on. Turn the switch of faith on. Amen? Right now, turn the switch of faith on. Receive what um God has for you. Amen? We don't have to struggle another day in our life, but we see what God has for you, amen, in Jesus' name. And over time, you will start to see physically manifest what God has for you. So I like these steps. The fourth step, the last step, is to tell it. This is, now these steps by Jesus. He said, tell it. And it said, verse 33, the woman came and fell before him and told him all the truth. If God do something for you, you got to tell another person. Like uh, God, like I said, three things I'm grateful for. God did those things for me. Some days I didn't know those things were going to happen, but I thank God. And I told, I told you, I said, and, and just like, just like me, tell, tell God what all the great things God done for you. You know, tell your testimony. Am I? We have to tell our testimony. And um, we have to tell our testimony. So I. I really love those four steps that Jesus said, um, which is say it, do it, receive it, and tell it. Four simple steps that Jesus gave the you know Kid Panga in his vision, uh, from himself, you know, um, from the book um, Exceeding Growing Faith. You know, if you want to get the book, it's, I ain't a pro yeah, but yeah, um, four simple steps that Jesus himself gave the um the man of God how to receive anything for God to say it, to do it. You know, to receive it and to tell it. You know, we got to tell our testimony, you know. So I thank God for that. You know, I thank God. This concludes episode 12. 
I thank God for that. You know, all things work together for the good. You know, I thank for um, you be blessed. Um, and also, I want to do an individual challenge. And I want to challenge you to include God in every small detail of your life. That's a challenge for me and you. And also a challenge to ask God for something big you know only he can do. Ask God for something big only he can do, you know, so God can get the glory from it. Amen. So this is it. This is my YouTube marks. Um, subscribe and share. You know, um, I'll go to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And uh, God bless. Amen.